Hello and welcome to our new video on serverless technology. This is a technology that I think everybody are either uses it or curious about like how they can use it. So a lot of companies are shifting to using serverless because it's saving them a lot of costs. Like there are some success stories that companies have saved about half a million dollars or so. So why not learning about it? Uh, I have implemented a complete architecture of serverless in my previous job. So basically all of their API was like running on the serverless. They were pretty much happy and not paying a dime. Yep, that's the miracle of serverless. On this video, we are not going to focus on just one cloud provider or even like one kind of serverless technology. Serverless means a lot of uh, things in different concepts. So we are going to see what offerings are out there uh, in general and uh, in specific, we are going to see the uh, offerings of GCP or Google Cloud. Uh, and at the end, we are going to address the questions so of like, how you are going to do the CI CD if it's completely serverless? Like, we don't know about it. We have done the Kubernetes, we have done the VMs, but how we are going to do the CI CD with it, how we are going to address the logging, monitoring, security, and all of those things. And we have a bit of homework for you at the end of the video. Okay, let's go ahead. Basically, that's the same concept that we shifted us or moved us toward Kubernetes. It's even like the same concept that is moving us away from Kubernetes or any kind of like server-based technologies. And that is configuring VMs and network socks. And not only that one, but dealing with the scaling, security, infrastructure, like all of them, they are not necessary if you are just running a small team or sometimes a big company that it, the technology is not a big, big aspect of it. And also it's like, you're going to tell your developers to always like follow the same set of rules, just develop with, not te with one technology like Java or anything like that. What if I don't like Java? What if like I'm a good developer, but I know Python and I'm cheaper for the company, what I should do. So as a company, you're not going to like hire him or her. Why not? Like, uh, they are good developers and also you want to hire a lot of people to make sure your technology or your infrastructure is 99.99% probably it's alive and up. Like that's a big hassle. That's a lot of cost. Many companies, uh, they don't want to like do that. So introducing the serverless technology, basically it means that we don't have any server to take care of it. Or basically it's better to say there is no ops in our side let the cloud like provider bear it. Either it's like uh, GCP or AWS or Azure, whatever it is, like let them deal with it. I don't want to deal with it. There is some kind of like price tag to it, uh, but you're not going to see that price tag if your requests are like uh, less than a certain amount, like 1 million per month or something like that. So you're not paying a dime in there or you're paying very uh, small amount. And also developers, they have the flexibility of do whatever they want because serverless technologies, they come uh, in supporting different languages like Node.js, Python, uh, Dino, for example, .NET frameworks, everything, everything is like out there and you can just develop your application and push it inside the cloud. And you are usually uh, paying pay per use and with a very generous amount of free tier. I think that's the way that these cloud providers, they want to attract uh, customers and then probably they're going to bring the price up. But for now, we are enjoying a lot of free tiers. Some companies, as I said, like half a million dollar, they have saved it. So how it works usually, uh, it's almost the same technology. So if you're a microservice, it works in the same realm that either it should work with pops up, webhooks, cron jobs, backend APIs, all of them are covered. Unless you have some kind of microservice that is out of this world, I don't know, uh, then you don't need it. But generally, I have seen a lot of use cases they can fit into this. Let's go to the next one, and that is different types of serverless. I remember the App Engine was one of the first ones that came into the market. Uh, Heroku uh, as a cloud provider also had the same offering and that is you just had a like code, like a package of code, either it's Node or it's Python, Flask, Django, anything like that, and you just push it to the cloud. So it's freestanding code and I, or apps basically and then it doesn't have containers, 
it just you push it on the cloud and they're using their own container technology to kind of package your application application and then just put it there uh, i think cloud run is the latest one in the gcp uh, but for other cloud providers it was like a bit uh, before than that and cloud run is the one on the left uh, in here is that the one that you can have this container as applications so when we are talking about app engine you just have applications and you just have some kind of limited kind of complexity in there that you can support because just you're uh, pushing up one application but from the other hand in cloud run because you are making your own container you can just make a lot of complexity inside that container that specific container and then push that container in the cloud and ju just forget about it the other one is cloud functions that's my absolute favorite so cloud function functions they come with very good amount and generous amount of like free tiers and it usually you can bring in your applications in there especially in gcp the deal is sweeter because they say that the ml and ai functions on gcp is much better than other clouds so basically you can have these cloud functions and write your own function we are going to see the use cases definitely and just have it running there so we can have http cron job pop sub whatever you want you can have it as a cloud function so cloud functions are pretty like smaller program so we can say in cloud run and app engine we had some kind of complex programs but in cloud functions we are targeting very small functions and we're going to see how it's going to happen okay first of all let's talk about cloud run architecture so we can have cloud run container uh, it can be like either hosting three applications in one that's great or we can have three different containers that's what i advise in here but we can have hosting like uh, different applications uh, in different containers, push it on uh, onto the cloud. And then one of the applications is going to do the front end for you. One of them is the back end and the other one for probably like back office stuff. And then they are going to connect to the cloud database that is like a SaaS offering. At the end of the day, you are not going to take care of database. Uh, we are not going to take care of like running it on the cloud. And also cloud run will do the scaling for you. Going to the next one, here we can have cron jobs also as like with cloud scheduler, that's another application on the cloud that it can like run your cron job. In this specific application, it's going to kind of generate some kind of invoices for your customers. So every month it's going in and just gathering data from your SQL database and then generating invoices for customers. Pretty easy and you just pay per use. So here you pay just for that one day in a month that your uh, container is using, being used. Cloud function is just a small function or a small, uh, small program that you can just upload to the cloud. Usually it's working with some kind of triggers. So trigger can be popsop, can be cron job, can be HTTP or webhooks. So all of these ones are covered or even like an event in the database. So you can like uh, kind of register to all of these kind of triggers. So the first sample we have here, we have a sensor in home, for example, smart homes we are talking in here. There is one cloud IoT core that like when sensor is like changing, it's going to send the data to the cloud IoT core. And that one is going to trigger pops up and pops up basically is like application that you are subscribing to it, publish to it and subscribe to it. So there are a set of applications that they are publishing the events to that pops up core. And we have some set of applications that they are subscribing to get that events and act on them. So here we can see that the cloud IoT core is publishing an event in there that the sensor shows this temperature. And from the other hand, the cloud function has kind of like uh, got there and uh, subscribed to that event and said that, yep, let me get that one and it triggers some kind of change in cloud IoT core, basically saying that let's go there and basically turn on the ceiling fan. So that's one uh, function that we can see in here, pretty easy and you can see why it's very beneficial for us. Uh, many of the applications, we don't need to write that such a big like uh, cloud function or application out of it or microservice for it. The second one is the storage. So there is some uh, video uploaded to the storage and then it's going to trigger some cloud function. 
there is some kind of processing happening in there and then it's going to trigger another one or post it to another API and that is Cloud Vision API from uh, Google and it's going to detect if there is some kind of offensive image in there and if there is one it's going to trigger another cloud function that blurs the image uh, using the image magic and I like the whole like set of in set in here and then it's going to store the image inside the storage basically no humankind is going to go there and kind of like filter out these images they filter it out they find it find them and then filter them with blurring them and then save it back to the storage Another use case of cloud functions that can be also a use case for something more complex like App Engine is in here. So App Engine is usually for big programs uh, or basically more complex programs compared to the cloud functions. Although I believe you can write most of the pro programs in cloud functions, but let's say that we have pretty big program with App Engine. So here we are like talking about YouTube, like use case of YouTube in here. So there is me, for example, publishing my video on cloud storage uh, in the YouTube, basically. And in there, it's going to firstly trigger a cloud function. Cloud function is going to run through my video. It really happens. Like when I uh, upload my video, there is like processing in there. It says it's like processing for uh, and it, the content itself and then it's going to process for if there is like copyrighted data in there or copyrighted music in there when it doesn't find it then it's going to register all those findings inside the metadata and stores into the cloud storage and from the other hand the front end that i'm seeing in here in real time it's being uploaded so once it has like got all those metadata from video it's going to fill out the form for me somehow so that's the use case that you can see that we can have the app engine and also we can have cloud functions and both of these technologies are serverless basically you are not kind of managing any servers in there another example of app engine basically i have seen that they are using app engine for more complex situations although you can uh, replace app engine with cloud run also so here we are having for probably user is going to uh, get some static content, App Engine is going to serve front end in there, and we have some uh, cloud storage that is like on the edge and serving the customers. On any event, it's going to either push it to the log processing and monitoring, that is like it pops up and you are going to use uh, another host of applications in there. Another one is probably like either serving dynamic content or probably changing the dynamic content and putting it there. Uh, there is one thing to note in here, and that is if you are going that route, that route, uh, that route to use these serverless applications, you should really start working with whatever that cloud has to offer to you. And that's, I think, the cloud, uh, cloud vendor's trick to really like lock you in. So basically, if you are in AWS and you are using serverless function and you are pushed to use other offerings from that cloud, like database, like data flow in here, or like the AI, you cannot all of a sudden like move your cloud provider and go to GCP if you got a better offer in there. It it will uh, basically cost you a lot of like human power or human like uh, consulting hours or all of those costs in there. So that's another trick that they're doing you with giving you a lot of free uh, free tier for all of these cloud functions to make sure that you're using other functions in there. If you are, for example, using, let's as an example, say here, the cloud functions. If you are using cloud functions, but you're not using other cloud pro, uh, providers uh, products, basically your cloud function is useless. So if you want to use that one, you should use the whole other set of cloud applications, which I like because at the end of the day, if you are on the cloud, basically you should use it and you should use it in a way that you are going to reduce your costs, reduce your uh, probably, and uh, it's not just one cost, like by infrastructure cost, but also the cost of like uh, employing a lot of people and taking care of them and managing them. And you need to like hire a manager for people. So, you know, it's like stacking up the cost. So instead of all those things, you can just go here fit being a bit smart. And at the end of the day, if you're going to go to the route of the cloud, I suggest that if you're in GCP, go in there and really learn about like what offerings are, are there. 
And the question that I promised that we're going to reach there, and that is what about CICD monitoring, like security, like you're now working on prem or probably Kubernetes, you're using Datadog. So for getting like all those logs and like all those data, and then you have like set all your APM, like application monitoring, uh, performance monitoring in there, or probably your alerting in there, but you don't want to move your application to one of these like serverless and all of a sudden lose all of like that configuration that you have done with your data. Duck. That's completely okay because all of these applications, they have been like working with Cloud, uh, GCP especially, they have been partnered with them. And also you can find whole other like applications that work with GCP or AWS or Azure. And basically you don't need to change these like providers or you don't need to change the way that you're working basically. And if you are new to that like space, you can use all these applications to, for example, GitLab or Circle CI to push to this, push to these kind of like technologies of serverless functions or HashiCorp for integrating the vault probably or using Terraform to kind of uh, running up these, uh, these serverless functions. So you can use whole host of these partners and the list is like much bigger than this. Just I took a screenshot for the cl cloud run. I know other technologies are working with them. So yes, and exploring more. So. We have seen what's happening in GCP. I really suggest go out there uh, and find out about like what is the offerings on AWS. So uh, AWS, uh, you can see here they have Lambda and they have Fargate, but for sure there are like a lot of other functions out there. There are a lot of like integrations out there that you can learn about and probably play with. Uh, Yesterday that I was making this slide, I was thinking that maybe I'm going to implement one of these architectures that with these cloud functions that you can take a picture of a place or a text that includes some kind of like probably logo and it's going to trigger a cloud function and that cloud function is going to not only translate it, but also if there is an oh, logo, there is a uh, logo in there, it's going to identify the logo and tell you this is like what's happening in here and there's, this is the logo of that company. You can easily do that with cloud functions, with AI that is given by Google and I'm thinking of implementing that one. So stay tuned for future videos that I'm going to implement that architecture. Yes, so that's it. That's all the data on serverless. I can say you know most of it. If you want to have some practice, go out there, find the solution that you really want to implement, that like you really love, for example, this one that I told, and implement it. Yep, that's it. Thank you and have a great day.